What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Joey, from the So Is Podcast here, back at you again with some more comic book reviews. Before we get started, of course, make sure you hit the like, make sure you hit the subscribe, and make sure you hit the bell down below so you know whenever we've got new content coming our way to you. So let's get into it. Like I said last time, I haven't been a consistent comic book buyer on Wednesdays for years, probably close to five or six years now. So what I've been doing is just heading into our local shop, our beloved Comics and More down in East Hampton, Massachusetts, and grabbing some stuff from the new releases that kind of catches my eye, reading it from that kind of perspective of someone who hasn't been reading books for uh, almost half a decade. And we're going to see what we think. We're going to rate them. We're going to review them. We're going to see what we got. So let's jump into it. I got three books for you today. Uh, first one right off the bat is going to be Spawn. Spawn number 328. Uh, Spawn was one of my favorites back in the day uh, when Image first launched. I probably got the first 50, 60 issues of it before I fell off reading it. Uh, huge fan of Todd McFarlane's artwork. Huge fan of Todd McFarlane. I actually met him at a work event uh, when I used to work for GameStop. And I got to tell you, he was cool as hell. Uh, great guy. Really enjoyed meeting him. And I've loved Spawn for a long time. Obviously, his work on other stuff like Spider-Man incredible hulk uh stuff was fantastic so kind of interested to jump back in i mean this is issue 328 i haven't read spawn since like i said probably about issue 50 or 60 so i have no idea what's going on in spawn or the world of spawn i know that in the last year or so there's been a whole bunch of extraneous books that have come in so i think there's a uh, girl spawn there's cowboy spawn there's a couple other spawn spinoff books that i have not read or even know what they are. So I hopefully I won't need to know reading this because I haven't read the book in a long time. So let's check it out. Let's see what we thought. So Spawn, um, it's written by Rory McConville with Todd McFarlane providing additional script uh, and art by Carlo Barbary. So let's check it out. Uh, cover art. I don't know who did the cover art. I apologize. All I can see is BB down the bottom here in the scribbling, but uh, one of the reasons I picked it up, besides the fact that I used to read Spawn all the time, was that the cover is freaking awesome. Uh, just I don't know if you can really see it here. Uh, but yeah, this cover art was fantastic. So I was just like, OK, you know, I haven't read Spawn in a million years, but I know it's having a bit of a renaissance and this cover looks fantastic. So let's check it out um, right off the bat. I was pulled right back in. I can show you right the first page. Uh, exactly like it used to be it reminded me like i never left uh all those years ago it reminded me jumping right back into the mid 90s there reading spawn um otherwise not my favorite not my favorite uh the art's fine it looks exactly like you think it should um slightly um off um mcfarlane-ish image style but the, the art looks right um it's just the story's a little hard to follow, um, just jumping in cold. And that's, you know, a little bit of the problem. Uh, we're looking at this as somebody who hasn't read books in a while. And I, I just I have no freaking idea what's going on in this book. Um, and they don't do a good job explaining it. They do a good job of kind of telling you who the characters are. But it's not giving you that feel of I don't need to go to Wikipedia and look everything up. And I'm not going to do that. I refuse to do that for these books. I'm trying to come at them from the span of I picked it up off the shelf. I'm reading it. Am I going to come back for another issue? The cover has nothing to do with the comic at all. So let's just get that out of the way. Once again, this amazing cover has nothing to do with what happens in the comic. But it's, you know, Spawn has got something is going on with Spawn. There's a Spawn in a cowboy hat that has assassinated a senator. Um there's some other guy with green eyes. Um, the Redeemer is still around. Uh, there's another angel type guy. And then some other guy shows up at the end. Um, that I, I'm assuming we're supposed to know who that is. But none of this is really explained. Uh, none of this is explained very well in the context of the book. And I think that is a conceit that is missing from a lot of modern books where Every book used to be someone's first. They used to always be a thing. And, and it'd be like comic book um, dialogue that people would make fun of sometimes where, you know, Spider-Man would show up and, and he'd have a panel or two explaining like, oh, I remember getting bit by a radioactive spider and getting powers, blah, 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 like explaining who he was. 
and every character would kind of have that kind of thing you kind of need to go back to that there this or at the very least there should be more of an intro to it i mean if you can see in the inside here so we've got just the credits and then this little page here kind of explains some of the things that happened in the past issues but it's, it's not enough um and then it just kind of jumps in so just knowing who spawn was and having a small background in it i really wasn't able to follow what was happening in the book um like i said the art looks okay uh, I'm assuming if I was reading this consistently, the story would be okay. There's nothing egregious or bad about the writing. It, it just isn't enough to pull me in as someone who hasn't been reading it. If I was going to read Spawn at this point after buying this comic, and I don't think I'm gonna, but if I was, I, I would have to jump to trades. I'd have to go back and pick up like two or three trades just to get myself caught up to even understand what I'm reading at this point. One thing I will say, and we're going to come to this in a little bit with one of the other books, is it feels right, though. The book feels right. Cardstock cover, pages feel fine. Art looks good on the pages, so no complaints there. And price-wise, $2.99. So we have a, a high-quality comic book, mass market release in terms of going to all comic book shops, going through previews, Diamond or whoever distributes books at this point. I think there's like five different companies now. Who knows? $2.99. So when we're looking at books from other publishers that are four or five, six dollars uh, a month, uh, I'm not really seeing like how that how that's kosher when we can do a high quality book with a nice cover with good paper and everything looks nice for three dollars. So maybe somewhere like maybe Todd is taking less of a cut of something. Maybe he's not paying as well. I highly doubt that. He's a good businessman. Um, but this one's a two ninety nine. So. If I'm going to rate it, I'm probably going to go with a two and a half out of five. Um, I feel nothing after reading this. I just, it, it's a book. I bought it. I read it. I'm not going to buy the next issue. Sorry. Sorry, Todd. Sorry, Spawn. Uh, maybe I'll come back in another uh, 300 and something issues and, and check it out again. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all set with Spawn. Um, just, just didn't grab me. As a new reader, there was nothing there for me, man. Didn't pull me in at all. Throw it off to the side, on to the next one. Deathstroke Inc. Deathstroke Incorporated, number seven from DC Comics. Um, big fan of Deathstroke as a character all the way back to uh, Teen Titans when I was very young, um, picking up his book, Deathstroke the Terminator, off the shelf. Uh, big fan of the character, really liked him. I even thought the Deathstroke in the after credit scene of Just Ass League was uh, looked fantastic that was a great live action visual representation of him uh but you know we he was cool on um on arrow too on arrow when uh manu bennett played him a fantastic great character love him love deathstroke so deathstroke inc no idea what this is um we got a cover here you can see the cover we've got ravager we got deathstroke we got whoever the heck this is and uh yeah Three ninety nine from DC Comics, number seven. Let's get to the uh, let's get to the the, the nitty gritty of it here. Uh, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Steven Segovia. So, again, right off the bat, we're kind of thrown into a storyline. Um, Deathstroke apparently is putting together some kind of army. Ravager and this other character are going to try to stop him. The one thing it does a lot better than Spawn is explain to you who's who. And it goes back to that comic book style because on the first page here, you know, they're kind of starting off their little adventure and their mission. But in the dialogue, they're explaining to you things you need to know if you hadn't read a previous issue of Deathstroke Inc. So again, that I appreciate. I appreciate that a lot. That's great um the art's okay i'm not gonna jump out of a building for it um serviceable uh again it, i'm not blown away by it it's a little bit of the style i like but not fully in the right the right direction i don't know if it's maybe the colors aren't really meshing with it but i'll show you this page right here you know that stroke and uh the other characters I don't know, man, just it might have been a little sketchy for me. I'm not really sure, but I wasn't 100% feeling the art. 
I'm not going to go into super spoilers about the story, but there's not a ton of action in this one. It's a lot of exposition about one of the characters' backgrounds and how they came to be. It's a lot of setup for um, what appears to be some kind of event starting up, which I believe is called the Shadow War, a crossover with Robin, Deathstroke, and Batman, because it's DC. Everything has to come back to Batman, doesn't it? Um, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Again, I'm probably two and a half out of five on this one. Um, the art's okay. The story's fine. It's just not a lot happens. And much like last week when we were talking about the Reckoning War, this feels like I bought a $4 advertisement for another series. Um it's not as bad as the reckoning war was. So I'm, I'm not um, upset. I, I like, I, I liked it enough, but I didn't love it enough. And it felt again, more like an advertisement for whatever this event is, instead of being uh, an awesome story or ongoing story about death stroke. Um, I, I get it. That's how the industry works now. It's events and all this stuff, but for me, I just it, it wasn't enough of a pull. I don't, I don't think I'll be back for issue eight, um, but it wasn't horrendously bad. So I'm probably about a two and a half out of five on that one. You know, Deathstroke Inc. number seven. It's OK. It's not mind blowing. I'm not going to go do backflips around the house, but it was something. You know, it was OK. Uh, Three ninety nine. I don't know, maybe when it comes out of the event, because I'm not going to buy the other pieces, uh, maybe I'd check it out again. Uh, maybe if there was a really cool drawing on the cover or something that caught me, my eye, I might jump back in again. But it's not going to get added to a regular poll list for me. So Deathstroke Inc. number seven, I picked it up because I love the character. I guess I'll just keep waiting for another Deathstroke book. And that's going to bring us to our third and final book. Coming at you from Marvel Comics, Silk, number three. I don't know how many volumes of Silk we're at at this point, but I thought it was pretty funny that it's number three. And then up in the corner here, they put a legacy number. So um, because Marvel has this thing where they just can't let any book be a book, it has to keep relaunching at number one over and over again. Then they put the legacy number on there. So, you know, if you were putting these in your long box where this would go and this one's number 34. So this is like the 10th volume of Silk and it's only number 34. Like, why can't it just be 34? I remember buying books off the rack when I was a kid and, you know, I just started reading comics. The first comic I bought was issue 68 of a comic. I was buying issues of the Avengers that were in the 200s, 300s, um, all sorts of books like that. And it never felt like too much to me. It never felt like, oh, well, I'm not going to buy comics because I can't figure out where to start. You just grabbed it off the shelf and you started from there. Um, the first DC book I ever bought in my life was Crisis on Infinite Earths number four. And there was no Wikipedia or Internet at the time. So I had to just figure it out based on uh, looking at the book, reading it and having watched Super Friends a bunch of times. And, and I had no issues with it. So. Um, this weird feeling where we need to keep relaunching books over and over again for some mythical audience that's never going to appear. Very strange to me. Very strange. I'd much rather have Amazing Spider-Man 800 something on the shelf than keep relaunching it over and over again. And then they're just going to go back to the number for the anniversary anyway. So then they're going to turn around after relaunching it twice and say, here's issue 900. Like, come on. Come on, it's idiotic, it's stupid comic stuff. Who cares? Anyway, Silk, number three, written by Emily Kim, drawn by Takeshi Miyazawa. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, $3.99. Bro, what is this? What is this? Look at this cover. What is this? It, it feels like a piece of tissue paper. The, the comic feels like shit. Um, and this has nothing to do with the contents of the book. Um, this could have been any book I bought. $4. It feels like tissue paper. It, it feels cheap. Um, I don't understand. Maybe, is this something new? Is this why this one isn't $4.99? Um, but then 
This was $2.99 and has a cardstock cover. And it comes from Image, which is a smaller company. This is owned by Disney. This is Image. Why is this higher quality paper? Why is this higher quality paper than this? I don't, I don't get it. So right off the bat, I was in a bad mood when I opened this book. <laughs> and big ups to Christian over at Comics and More. He pointed it out to me when I was buying it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get it anyway. Um, not that familiar with this character. Do remember her appearing in Amazing Spider-Man a while back. And a uh, good thing about this, and I will give kudos to Marvel for this, first page explains to you everything you need to know. You know, That's quick, easy description of the character. That explains to you what's been going on in the storyline. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Would I like to see it a little, little more exciting than a blank piece of paper with a bunch of words on it? Yes. Do I care? No, because I now have a more of a grasp of what's happening in this book. Of course, then we have to read the book. Um, I was not a fan of this book. Um, apparently, there is a witch who is draining people's love and emotion and energy out of them. Um, she is going around doing this, and then uh, her and Silk confront each other. Hijinks ensue, and we're left on a cliffhanger. Um, that's fine. The art, just, just, just not for me. It's not for me. I'm not going to say it's bad art. It is just not for me. It's way too cartoony. Um, it feels like this weird manga um, American comics hybrid. Uh, that doesn't work in either direction. I'd rather them go all the way into a manga style or go all the way back into an American comic style than this weird hybrid thing. I don't understand what that is. Um, it's funny because the cover looks fantastic. Uh, the art on the inside is completely different. So, and that's uh, in Hugh Lee as the cover artist. So unfortunately, I don't think they could get him on the interior of the book. But yeah, I just I wasn't feeling the art at all to start um, the story. And I'll just kind of hold up these pages here. This is the majority of the book. The majority of the book is Silk and her friends talking. Okay. $3.99. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's not even really much to say. The, the majority of this book is Silk and her friends talking and sending each other text messages and doing wacky things that I guess teenager 20 somethings do. And then uh, this witch shows up and tells you her origin. And then there's a cliffhanger. Um, they fight a tiny bit, but that's it. There, there's, just, there's just not enough action in this. I, I, I'm, I'm confused as to like what the hook is for this to make me want to buy another issue because we've got, God, I just, the, the quality of this paper is just awful. Like, look at this it's it's like it's printed on tissue paper it costs four dollars and there's just no meat here there's no meat and potatoes here so i, I cannot get over this cover like, of how cheap this is it's embarrassing um and it's just it's just there uh, this is probably why we're on the 15th volume of silk at this point maybe there just isn't enough uh, in silk to make her her own book like maybe she just needs to be a supporting character or in a limited series or something well, I guess it's technically a limited series if it gets canceled 15 times. But like I said, the majority of this is, and you can kind of see it here, is, you know, Silk's friends uh, sending each other texts and doing wacky things, I guess, and living their lives. Um, it's just nothing here, man. There's no hook for me to read this ever again um, between the terrible quality of the paper and the book. Um, between the, the storyline, which does absolutely nothing uh, for me. And the art just wasn't that great either. I, I, I mean, I'm probably at a one and a half, probably at a one and a half out of five on this one. There's nothing egregious where I'm like, this is a terrible book that shouldn't be published. It's clearly not for me. I just don't know who it's for. Like who would pay? Who Who is walking into a comic book store to buy this? Nobody. That's the problem with the industry, to be honest with you. But nobody's walking into the comic book store to buy this. Maybe it sells great and collected things at a book fair or Scholastic or in a library. 
But as somebody who's trying to become a Wednesday warrior again, picking up books that cost three to five to six dollars each, this ain't it, man. Um, there's just nothing here for a story. There's no hook. There's no action. Uh, the quality of the paper and the actual book itself is just trash. And I'm only giving it a one and a half almost to be nice because uh, I feel like people that made the book put the effort in to try something that they wanted to do. But certainly didn't work for me and that's a really cool cover too. so i like i like the picture on the front of the book it's just uh, the book itself is terrible so one and a half out of five for silk number three throw it on the floor we're done with that one and that's it those are the three books i read this week uh, i'll be back next week checking out some more new releases and seeing what i think um as always you know check out the podcast every week uh, check out our YouTube channel. Like we said, like subscribe, hit the bell so you can get more content. If there's any books that you think I should definitely be reading or checking out, feel free to hit us up and I'll check them out. Uh, we'll gladly take press copies of <laughs> any of these books or things you want to send us to review. Uh, I just can't promise you'll like the review. So that's going to do it. That is comic reviews for this week. I've been Joey. We'll see you next time. Good journey. <laughs>